Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Rick at Techspin. Hope you all had a great Chinese New Year. With a week off for that and all the coverage and editing of the Taipei Game Show, it delayed my release schedule a bit. Here's the KB Lake build I promised, and the Tutankhamen Common case review is right up next. All right, here's my new pride and joy, and boy does she look pretty. It's the MSI Z270 Titanium Motherboard, made for the new KB Lake CPUs, with an amazing silver PCB coating, heat sinks, and piping for the inductors and power stages, an I.O. jack and audio component cover with a LED light channel, onboard Mystic Light RGB onboard controller, and the power, reset, and overclocking controls in the bottom right. Top left, you can see both the supplemental 8-pin EPS connector, as well as another 4-pin EPS for overclocking your CPU. I was very lucky that my newer PSU had not just one, but two EPS power cables. You can't use 8-pin PCI cables in an EPS connector, so without a newer PSU or a 4-pin Molex to 8-pin EPS adapter, you might be out of luck. Here we see the steel arm reinforced PCI slots, three M.2 slots, one with a shield, and a supplementary 6-pin PCI power connection. This board, it's eating up all my modular cabling. There's two SATA 3 ports by the 24-pin ATX connector, six SATA 3 on the side, and a U.2 connector. The dual-channel memory slots all have metal armor reinforcement. The OC dashboard plugs right into the small port in between, leaving the 9-pin voltage check module available. It comes with a 27-centimeter extension cable, too. The back of the board is amazing, too, with the same silver PCB treatment, printed graphics, certifications, and a sturdy metal CPU backplate. Wow. The Z270 X Power Gaming Titanium is a flagship motherboard and has lots of standard accessories and additional goodies inside. You have the driver installation CD, good. And inside this bag comes a USB 2.0 expander module with Velcro on the back. You can use one board port to give you four more USB 2.0 ports if you power it with a four pin Molex. It comes with both a connecting cable as well as the other half of the Velcro strip. Next is a sheet of SATA cable labels and a thank you, please register reminder. We have a quite useful quick install guide, a color poster and board map, and the thick user guide. Next there's these really cool silver transparent SATA cables, just wow. Three packs times two cables is six total. Three of those have a single L-shaped connector end while all the rest are straight. MSI has graphic printed the IO shield and it looks very nice. Here we see the Mystic Light connecting cable. It runs off the single motherboard header and splits into two ends to run compatible RGB lighting. This is the extension cable for the OC dashboard I mentioned earlier. And an MSI branded SLI bridge ribbon cable. Last we have modular mounting accessories, a metallic case badge, and the voltage checkpoint cable bag with instructions. A bit weird, there's nine points on the board, but only six cables. The new KB Lake comes in two i7 variants. I opted for the fastest one, the 7700K, which was 11,500 NT, or about 370 US dollars. Glad I chose this over the X99 board, i7 6850K, I was considering at nearly double the cost. Here I'm installing the CPU. First I lift the lever to make the 1156 socket open and take the CPU carefully out of the packaging. The board's on the foam padding it shipped with, if you're wondering. I check the two notches at the top of the CPU so they match and lay the CPU in the socket carefully to not bend any pins. I always take out the top piece manually, but decided to trust instructions this time and lower the lever in and it pops right out. Cool. So I've had stuff on order for this build from Amazon since January 9th, still waiting for it to be shipped. I bought two packs of the Corsair Vengeance LPX 32GB DDR4 3200 in white but in order to get this review out, I'm putting in a stick of Kingston HyperX 8GB DDR4-2400 memory in the meantime. From the CPU out, memory slots are channel A1, A2, B1, and B2. On page 29 of the manual, it says for one stick, it should actually be one slot up in A2. Whoops, now I know. Here's the cool M2 shield, which swings up and has thermal paste on the underside. It also comes right off, lucky too, because it's a fingerprint magnet. Curious why they didn't give you at least two, weird. Either cool off a RAID setup or fill empty spots. Anyways, I want to show off my Samsung 960 EVO in my build, so I'm going to switch screws and secure it down in place. Still lifts a bit, but no big deal. To put in the 960 EVO, you insert it at a 30 degree angle, then push it down. Finally, you screw it in place. 
and it's installed. Here I'm installing my Cooler Master Hyper 212X to test, and the backplate fits on easily. Next comes thermal paste. Lots of theories abound on the internet as to how much you need using a dot, X pattern, or coat. Me, I tend to use a lot, but at least it's covered and it transfers heat well. Then the 212 sits down on top of that, and I first get each screw to thread into the bolt before tightening down in an alternating pattern. I usually do this last step after the motherboard's been installed in a case, so I'm careful and I pick it up by the heavy heatsink. Always turn or move your case slowly if you have a big heatsink or a heavy graphics card. You don't want to stress the components and damage can and does happen. If you need to move your PC in a vehicle, always lay it motherboard flat. My friend snapped off his PCI slot with a large GPU in a vertical position. Alternatively, remove the card and reinstall after moving the PC. Compared to an SSD, I tested how fast Windows 10 boots from an NVMe drive. So let's go to that footage now. Okay, so now we're gonna hook up this system and give it a test run here. So first I got a Cooler Master V750. So let's plug in the ATX24 pin here. And this will go. Just for hooking up sake, I'm gonna put this right across the motherboard. We'll make it nice later in the cable management. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do the ATX 4 pin next. Click, that's good. That goes in right there. That goes in this way. Because the tabs are on the top, it's going to make it really interesting when I do the final install. Next, we need an additional ATX power. Another 4x4. Four four. We're only going to be using four of this. Now these have to match exactly, so let's see here. It's going to go this way, and it's going to be the left or the right one. Okay, it is the right one here that I'm going to use. I would check. I think the other one will still fit into this. Let's see. Yes, it does too. That's dangerous. Make sure you use the, the correct one. Check the shape of the shape of the holes. Okay, next one. Finally, we will connect the PCIe power to the motherboard. That's gonna go right there, like so. I will require some way to turn this on. Hmm, interesting. Oh yeah, I have this panel right here. You can try that. <laughs> okay, last thing I need to do is hook up the HDMI cable here. And power. Hopefully, everything goes well. I have a light on the board. This is good. Turn that on. Power. See if it works. 9C. A2. CPU or memory changed? Oh, okay. Well, it looks like it's working so far. Let's get a keyboard. Here's a random keyboard I have lying around. Looks pretty. Oh, that looks really pretty there. Check out that. That's nice. Alright, power on again. 4.2 gigahertz, DDR speed 880. Is that it? Really? I thought that was higher. Let's see the box. Accelerate gaming. Maybe I'll have to check it later and see. 
Okay, so we're gonna boot up win, uh, Windows here. This is the second time I'm going to be going into Windows, so let's start it and see. One, two, three, go. Let's see exactly how long it takes. 20, uh, that was already a second before. I was 20.7, 20.8 seconds from the power button to the desktop. That's crazy fast. Cool. Okay, so the next step is to drop it into a sweet case, and I have just the one. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, and thumbs down if you didn't. Tell me why. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe for new content and click that bell icon to get notified when I put up a new video. I read comments and reply, so if you have a question or if I miss something, please tell me down below. And let me know what you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching. See you all again soon. Bye for now.